To create a new game from load world, we will go to all and look for a world called empty world. Click play. As usual, press escape in order to go to the edit mode. Of course, there is another way to start a game, which is from the home menu. You can simply say new empty world and you get the same thing here. Now you have an empty world. To start with, you need to add a land. This can be done using the ground brush. Ground brush can have different patterns. Also, you can have different shapes. Like for now, I have the circle. I can have something different. From here, we can have a square. You can also draw lines. So now I'll use the square brush. So let's say that I want to change the color of the terrain. Let's say that we'll have something more natural like a ground, for example, here. So in order to change the color, you will can just paint. But if you want only to change the color of the available land, you don't want to add any new land, just as simple as press shift and then color the land you have here. So as you can see, we have no more land. Also, you can always refer the instructions here. So now let's say I want to have something similar to a park. So let's say I want to add a lake in the middle. So I'll use the raise tool, which will give me, uh, which will allow me to create uh, like a pond in the middle of the park. So I'll choose a different tool. Maybe I can go on. So I'll choose this magic tool. This magic tool will choose the entire area of the same pattern. So now I can simply as you can see, now the land has been raised, and now we can do something different. We'll have, we'll choose a different color. Let's say we want to add water, so let's choose something bluish, like this one here. Then I'll choose maybe a circular brush, increase the size. Now I'll add it maybe in the middle here. So now I'll go to the raise tool again. Then I will lower this area using the left mouse click. Now I have this lake ready. I need to add water to it. I have here the water tool which allow me to add water. Of course, you can choose different colors for water. Some of them are even glowing, black, wherever. I'll choose the nature color. Then I'll add water by clicking. For example, it exceeds. I want to remove the water or lower the level simply by right click. As you can see here, I have I have water ready. I want to add some fish to this pond. So we will go to the object tool. First of all, let's try to change the camera. It will be clear to us. I will add maybe a couple of fish here. Go to objects. Then I'll choose fish. So here I have one fish. I, I can simply roll over the object and then with the mouse arrows I can choose different color, maybe blue. Now let's say I want to rotate this fish because I don't want I want to be like facing maybe middle of of the lake. Now I want this fish not just to stand still. I want it to be I want it to move all over the the lake. So we will because in this case, let's try to run it. As you can see, it's just standing still, it does nothing, it does not react to anything. So we'll go back to the edit mode, we will add a path. The path allows you to draw certain streets or walls or lines which other objects can move on. So for example, we will add a simple path which goes around the around the lake, and we will make the fish move around it will make it a little bit scattered again you can choose a color for the path by simply hovering over it and then going with the arrows let's say I want it to be white so when you're done you can go to any of those when you have two circles now you can just close this path or just leave it open if you want when you're done just try to click now I'll go back to my fish, then right click, program, and I'm going to say move on path. You can even specify the color, for example we specified it that 
if you have more than one path, you can specify the color. So maybe I want the fish to move over the white path only. You can even specify the speed quickly or maybe on one direction. Anyhow, that's not relevant now. So let's try it now. Now as you can see, the fish is just wandering all over the lake. Actually, it's walking on the on the path which we draw, but it will not be visible for the player. So maybe, let's see, maybe I can even lower the fish because it's somehow up. I want it to be a little bit lower. I'll simply just click on the fish and change the height. Maybe I can make it even lower. So now it's totally under the water. So now I can I want to create more than one fish. So I can just simply copy this fish and paste as many as I want instead of recreating each one individually and reprogram it again, change all different settings of it. So here for example we have it yellow. Let's try to rotate it, maybe something like this. So now I added about a dozen of fish now here. And I have this path which we, they are swimming over. Uh, now they're moving on this path. I added a couple of trees, maybe an apple, a bowl, something just to seem like a park. Because my theme here is just to create a park. Now, what can we do else? Let's say that we will add a kodo. Well, this kodo is a little bit small, so maybe we'll change its size according to the... so maybe it'll be like something like this maybe we rotate it maybe so it will be facing the pool so let's say we want it to be orange simply we change the color using the arrows so now I want Kodo to eat those fish. So I'm gonna say when you bump sorry, when you bump into a fish eat it. Let's try it now. So as you can see the fish is moving great but Kodo is not moving, it's just standing still there. So Apparently it will never go to the pool, it will never bump into fish, and it will never eat it. So what shall I do? Let's add some interactivity to it. I'll go back to the object tool, select Kodo, go to program, and then I'll say when there's a keyboard input, move. This is by default, will make Kudu move when the user uses the arrow keys or the ASD and W keys. Of course you can be more specific and say maybe if we pressed um, the delete key, do so and so, move maybe uh, on path, certain path, but for now we'll just use default. It will be enough. So now whenever Kudu moves and if it bumps into a fish, it will eat it. Let's try it now. As you can see now, the, move, the view is different because it will give you like a first person view. In order to change that, simply go to settings here, the entire game settings, not just Kudu setting. You have a camera mode. Of course you have a lot of settings like um, starting camera, show compass, you can even have different uh, sky for your wall. For now I'll just go with the default. You can even choose if it's day or light. There's a lot, setting, a lot of settings here. What I'm concerned about now is the camera mode. You can, for now, it's free. You can have a fixed offset. I'll use now the fixed position. So at all time, the camera will be set to a specific angle, and I'll see always the same view. Then I'll choose set camera. Now it will ask me to set how I want it to be positioned. I'll simply do that using the arrows as if I'm using camera I'm orbiting. Of course you can always have those keys here. 
to help you navigating and so you'll never forget what to do. There's always those steps here. So now I'm done, I'll just press enter. So now whenever I play my game it will be in this view, it cannot be changed, the user cannot play with the, with the view. So now as you can see I can just move here using the arrows. Now I'm eating those fish. As you can see, Kudu is above the water. You can make Kudu go under the water if you want that from the settings also. From But this time from Kudu settings will be. As you can see, I have eight old fish, but still nothing happened. What shall I do? So now we will add the wing case. I'll go to Kudu. I'm going to say... When you eat a fish, I want you to do something else. I want you to add a score. We will add, for example, one point for each score. But I want this to be a sub-statement of the first one. So I'll just use the key, use enter, and now I can shift it. So, as you can see, I have it now like shifted a little bit so whenever this statement happens, this statement will happen as well because I didn't have a win case. Even I can specify here another win case the, another win case. So now whenever I bump a fish I'll eat it and I'll add one to the score. Let's maybe specify I want it to be the red score. So now I have dozen of fish so when the score or well, let's say more specific if I scored on the red score 12 so I don't have 12 here what shall I do? I have 10 and I'll add 2 what will happen? the game will win like I'll win the game it will be done so now when I eat a fish it increases my score as you can see it has a red color actually now it's more like a counter rather than score I will use it later on as we'll see as we saw uh, to specify that if you reach 12 then you've ate all the fish then you win so scores here you have like many scores and it's more like counters and variables not just scores, so it's really helpful. As you can see here, I reached the 12, so I'm a winner now, and the game has ended. If I want to just, because I'm using it just as a counter, I don't care about the score, I can go back to settings, and then I'll have from here, for example, it's red, so I'm gonna see the score visibility red, I can just turn it off. So now when I play the game, it will not be shown. And still, if I ate all the fish, I will be counted as the winner. And here I win. As you can see, this game still worked even if the score is not happening. So here we are. We've done a very simple game. It's a pretty interesting maybe for little kids, but of course you can make more interesting more interactive games it can be more than one player you can use as we said scores in order to differentiate between different players maybe different players will have different uh, colors maybe different players will have different letters so and even like because of the keyboard mouse maybe you can even use your xbox then you can specify that those letters maybe if those letters then do this action that will mean that this player the first player and if the arrows for example that is the second player so you can even have multiplayer games with Kodo. In order to send your game and share it click on the game and then click export. The, your game is now exported as a single file to this location. Location is go to your documents, saved games, and then from saved games you'll find one file called Boko. From Boko go to player one, exports, and you'll find your game exported. Now you can email this file to mcy at ms2b.com in order to join the competition. Also you can email it and share it with your friends.